All right, I'm addressing the allegations. It's alleged that the Anika build is better than the CCBS build. That's not even a strong intro. I'm going to keep it. Anyway, hi. <laughs> I'm going to defend my position, though. Um, I actually do think that. Here's the thing. CCBS feels like an Anika build, but it doesn't get the same criticism as the Anika build does. And with reason. The Anika build, or Paraka build, whatever you want to call it, was introduced in 2006. The Paraka build for the Paraka, the Anika build for the Anika. Who knew, right? <laughs> but 2007 was smart in the sense that it varied that build up. Because 2007 chose to do non-clone sets, but using, let's say, clone pieces. Focusing a lot more attention rather than on the bones of the figures, the torsos of the figures, on smaller pieces, weapons, spines, armor, etc. Right? So we got a lot of armor pieces in 2007, a lot of these sort of accessory pieces. Not so much in terms of the bodies. And in terms of the legs or the arms, the limbs, the feet, the this, the that, right? Well, actually, we did get a decent amount of feet in there as well. We did get one new torso, though, in 2007. And it's the weirdest thing. The torso from the Kangu Mari set, which honestly, to me, hardly feels like a torso. It's in a different realm from the Paraka torso, from the Inika torso as well. Mostly because there are no ball joints included on it. You have to add them yourself. It is also made of soft plastic polypropylene rather than ABS. I don't know what the reason for that is, but okay, fair enough. I'm not a huge fan of that piece personally, but it's at least nice to see that they were trying to do something different with that piece, right? 2008 would also introduce a new torso with the Makuta builds as well. And also, if you want to consider them, the Avmatoran torsos, two of them. That's pretty generous. Now, personally, maybe I could have gone for just one Avatoran torso and spent that other piece elsewhere. Maybe a different torso entirely. Tor torso? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and I've had ideas. I've, eventually, I plan to develop something that can work both for the Makuta and the Mystica builds that is more poseable than what we got, of course. But that's for a different day. No, the problem I have with CCBS, and I've mentioned this in a previous video, is that it's called the Creature and Character Building System. You can reverse the order of those if you want, but it's really not a creature building system per se. We got only a handful of creatures out of it with the Dragon Bolt set, uh, a creature-like build with the Surge's Battle Machine. What is that called? Surge's Crawler Machine? Something like that. Whatever. Anyway, Combat Machine, maybe? Anyway, <laughs> but both of them are basically just humanoid builds turned on their side, which I guess that's fair. What are animals, right? But there's not a lot of ingenuity in those builds, not a lot of interesting things going on. It's usually just body stacked on top of body in some way. You don't see in CCBS, and I'm going to use Karnas, Karnax, as an example here. You don't see a lot of this, these sort of angular bodies. In CCBS. And I think that's because one of the flaws with that system, in my opinion, is that it's most friendly at 90 degree angles, which is fine. That's going to do well for most things. You know, an axle works at 90 degree angles, so at least it's within the system itself. But it doesn't work so well for things like this. When you want to do something more experimental, more fun, not to say it can't work, of course it can. It just wasn't really experimented on. I think that that's a missed opportunity. Maybe something else that we got that was kind of close would be the General Grievous set from CCBS that we got, uh, which had a pretty fun build in it as well. And some of the Titan or large XL characters from Hero Factory had some pretty all right builds in general. But it still ends up being a lot of the same thing. Maybe part of that, part of my distaste for it is just my lack of experimentation myself. Though I have played around with the parts and created some really cool stuff. Um, you have the the Queen Beast from Invasion from Below. Arguably my favorite. Probably the best. <laughs> my favorite wave though. From Hero Factory. And that one has a fun build as well. Even if it is still a fairly simple one. Anika builds. Felt like they wore out their welcome. Much faster than CCBS did for some reason. And I don't know how to identify what that reason is because I think that there were a lot more exciting things going on with the Anika build in general. Partially because you had the option to add whatever 
hip piece you wanted to your build or to stretch it out entirely like you saw on the Tuma Titan where you attach lift arms to the body instead and then the hips are way down here and you have a torso of whatever size you need with just one or two pieces. CCBS's answer to that is just create a longer torso, create a wider torso and that's that bothers me. Because to me, it feels like in order to do something, you shouldn't just make that piece longer or shorter or wider or narrower. Like the option should be built in to the best of your abilities at the very least. It's not to say you can't make new torsos. Of course you can. But when the torso is basically, oh, it, look, it's the old torso again, but longer. <laughs> That's not very exciting to me. Now, I understand that CCBS is a system in and of itself, but you could kind of consider the Anika build its own system. It's just the Anika build is backwards compatible in more ways, in my opinion, than CCBS is. That's not to say you can't just use a CCBS torso and then finish it off with the Anika parts everywhere else because you can. It's just ball joints, but it feels off. Another reason for this, in my opinion, is the texture on pieces. Of course, that's going to relate to Bionicle itself, but I don't mean having pistons on things to invoke Bionicle. Something that CCBS did very well was the torso armor, right? There are a lot of different types of torso armor for CCBS, and each of which gives you several different options in terms of texture, but then you get to the arms and the legs, and the shells are basically all the same, and you have to do that job with add-ons. But what if you don't want to use add-ons? Someone pointed this out to me when I made the last video, that the CCBS is sort of this sandwich building system, right? It's a an under layer, a middle layer, and a top layer. But the problem with that is you can't really go past that top layer, you know, so you can't like keep adding on if you wanted to. And you can't really leave a piece bare if you want to without it looking weird, you know? Like you can kind of lean into it and thankfully Bionicle in Generation 2 gave us the literal bone piece, which looks good on its own, though there are ways to attach armor to it that I have found. I'll talk about that in a separate video, but it's still an interesting concept to me, and it's a missed opportunity in some ways as well. But in defense of the Anika building system, someone had pointed out that 2007 felt kind of cheap, maybe. Um... And I kind of understand what they're getting at there. When you've got sets like Prydac or Elec that don't use armor at all, they trade that armor off, in my opinion, for that thin nature of those sets, right? For the color of those new parts, right? You get the sockets in white, you get the sockets in lime green, however detrimental that might have been due to the fragility of some of those parts. Though, thankfully, Elec does not suffer quite as much as Holly does. With that said, though, it interests me because 2007 goes a different direction from 2006 in a way that I think is very smart. Here's the thing. 2004, in my opinion, introduces sort of the peak in terms of Bionicle form and function. It's not perfect, and I do think that in some ways 2015 does it better, in some ways it does it worse, but the why I say 2004 is the peak, if you will, and that I'm being a little hyperbolic saying it, but is because it's a very, very good balance of all of those things. The aesthetic is done very well. The gears are hidden if you want them to be, but you don't have to. You can take that gear cover off. You can use that for other things. You have the option to add uh, a pin bushing in there, as we were shown with the Toa Haga sets, to give you friction in those joints instead of a gear. So they gave you options, and I appreciate that. It's one of the things I like so much about the Toa Mata is how different each of them is able to be with their sort of similar builds, even with Pohatu being upside down. But then the Metru builds are all basically the same with one piece moved around a little higher or lower, and that bothers me. So the Haga at least rectify that to some degree by adding different types of armor in different places, changing the arm length or color, whatever shape, <laughs> you know. It shows you that they're at least trying. 2005, though, to me, is not the greatest year for Bionicle. The Hordika look interesting on a shelf for about 10 minutes, and then they get very boring. Because for being mutated sets, it's really odd that they all look the same, and in fact, have no differences, unlike their Metro counterparts. Yeah, the masks are different, the weapons are different, but that's it. And I believe even in the instructions, the arms that are longer are all, all on the same side. Now, that's 
something you can mirror, that's easy enough to do. But if we had continued with that, where would Bionicle be? You know? Yes, I have something in my eye. Um, <laughs> it just makes me think for a minute. Because how much further than 2004 can you go? People have continued to build upon that system specifically. My personal belief is that we should have gotten more recolors for that torso or even the other parts as well. So we had more options for characters we could build outside of the standard six elements or to change up those colors for those elements as well. I would have loved to have seen a Mata red torso or a Mata green torso on Norik and Iruni, right? But unfortunately, we didn't get that. And that happens. Now, one of the reasons my favorite Tometru is Nuju, outside of the fact that his weapons are also snowshoes, which is actually a pretty clever use of those parts, but is also because he continues to carry over that brighter color scheme, that brighter spirit of Matanui, more so than any of the other Tometru. You could argue that Oniwa is lighter in color as well, which is true. He's not the standard brown, but he's sort of that light, medium, flesh tone, whatever color that is called. But it's still muted, right? Nuju is the one exception to that, in my opinion. But getting back on board to what I was saying. The Anika build does something right. Even better than the Paraka, in my opinion. And that is varying limbs. It's not done so often on the Anika themselves. But on sets that came afterward, 2007 and onward. Having different limbs of different lengths experimenting with those parts, using them in clever ways in Titan builds. It's something that, honestly, I think we lost. And it's something that has so much potential even today. I know that there are a lot of people who focus on, let's say, really greebled builds, builds with hundreds of pieces in just like a limb or a torso or whatever. And that's cool. It's not my taste, but it's fine. But... I still, to this day, am able to squeeze things out of the Anika build that are impressive to me, right? If, if you saw the video, and I'll go ahead and uh, link it to the end of this video as well. If you saw the video about the prototype scrawl using the Paraka body on a ball joint on a Mata foot so that it had articulation in the waist similar to Pridex set, that would have blown Pridex set out of the water entirely. And people love 2007, for the most part. But yeah, 2007 is not perfect. 2008 is not perfect. 2009 is not perfect. No, no year is. Maybe one of these days I'll make a video on which year is best to worst. A tier list, who knows. Suffice to say, I think that the Anika build has a lot to love, even today, in 2024, which is crazy to say. It's just all about what you're able to do with it. Breathe new life into it, you know? Use a different combination of colors for a change. Keat orange and dark green are excellent together. Mata red and dark green, I love those colors too. At least for plant life, right? <laughs> um, you've got so many options there that I think are worth exploring so that your builds don't feel mundane, don't feel like the same thing over and over again. Take inspiration from combination models that came out, not only with the Zyglac or the Naya Zesk, but even some of the worst ones, you know? But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you did, if you did make it this far, thank you very much. <laughs> I was going to say something else, and I don't remember what. But anyway, uh, feel free to subscribe. It really does help out the channel. We're nearing 2,000 at this point. And of course, you can always join the conversation in the comments or check out the Instagram, Discord, or Patreon if you want to support the channel. Get some perks in the description below, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.